Hi, I'm Mark Barsanian. In this video, I'll be discussing a trick that sometimes works when finding derivatives. A function that might look like you would have to use the quotient rule to find its derivative can sometimes be rewritten so that you don't have to use the quotient rule. This material is from section 3.3, Derivatives of Products and Quotients, and more specifically, on page 199, there is a similar example, uh, example 4c. I see there's a typo here. This should not have a 5, just example 4c. So remember our derivative rules so far, the basic rules, constant function rule, power rule, sum and constant multiple rule, the rules involving derivatives of exponential functions and logarithmic functions that we learned in chapter 3.2, section 3.2. And then from earlier in this section, 3.3, we learned the product rule. And then in the previous video, we learned the quotient rule, this ugly rule for finding the derivative of a quotient. Today we'll just do one problem. It's similar to exercise 3.3, number 73 f of x is this quotient. So we're going to find f prime of x by two methods. First, we're going to find f prime using the quotient rule. So there's the quotient rule result, just that setup. Now let's uh, go on to the next step. We'll write down the stuff that's not going to change. And then we fill up those parentheses with the results of those derivatives. The derivative on the left, we'll just use our basic rules for. The derivative on the right, we also do using basic rules. Now we have to simplify. So we did a couple of things in this step. We distributed that 7x to the 6th to both those terms. We kept the minus sign out front, waiting for the next step. And then we dealt with the denominator. x to the 7 squared means x to the 7 times 2. In other words, x to the 14. Let's uh, keep going. Notice the 7x to the 13 cancels. That one cancels that one. We end up with this term, but it's got a minus sign on it. Now we can simplify some more. We end up with minus 91x to the 8th. So that's f prime using the quotient rule. Part b, start over. Simplify f of x, then find f prime using easier derivative rules. Well, let's go up and have a look at f again. f of x is this thing, x to the 7th plus 13, all over x to the 7th. Well, let's simplify this by breaking it into two fractions with the same denominator. Okay, well now we can simplify this even further. x to the 7th over x to the 7th is just the number 1. And the second term, that is written in positive exponent form, but we're looking forward to the next step where we're going to find the derivative. To take the derivative of this term, it would be good to convert it from positive exponent form to power function form. Okay, so now we've got a function written in power function form. Now we can find the derivative. So in this first step, we use the sum and constant multiple rule. Notice that our multiplicative constant, 13, slips right through the derivative symbol. The other number, 1, is not a multiplicative constant. It's a constant function. It has to stay inside the derivative. All right, the next step, we just use our basic derivative rules. So we used the power rule with n equals minus 7. Now I showed it very explicitly because I wanted to make sure that we did the exponent carefully. The exponent is going to be minus 7 minus 1. 
I wanted to write that down and then do it in the next step. So there's our result in power function form. Let's convert it to positive exponent form. So we get minus 91 over x to the 8th. Notice that when I dealt with the negative exponent, the negative exponent is only attached to that x. It's not attached to the 91. So the 91 stays up top, and the x goes down to the bottom. So compare this method to our previous part a. Part a, we use the quotient rule, which is one of the tricky rules with lots of, with lots of uh, potential for mistakes. This solution used basic um, operations, rewriting the function, simplifying the function, did that first. And then the derivative was our, our basic derivative rules. We used the power rule, and we used the constant function rule for our derivatives. We used the sum and constant multiple rule, the basic derivatives. So the solution B, where we simplify the function first and then use simpler derivative rules, is definitely the better solution. So again, uh, this function that looks like a quotient, you can find its derivative using the quotient rule, but it's hard. There is an easier way for this function that does not involve the quotient rule, and that's much better. Okay, that's the end of this example, and that's the end of the video. Thank you.